Good afternoon all, CamelbackTrading.org coming to you this Tuesday afternoon, March 21st. We are looking at Window Traders' market profile of the ES and SPY. And as one of my traders loves to say in our trading room, this market continues to amaze and delight children of all ages. As we come out of a double inside day on a gap higher, don't get much of an inventory adjustment, but however, we go trend down in B period, only to take that back, but then spend a good part of the day lowering both volume pock and TPO, and then have the three stooges throw it all out the window and rip higher and price probe. So with this kind of move, kind of telling me, I think some people are thinking that there's going to be no uh, rate hike tomorrow. I still think they're going to do 25 basis points. Regardless of what they do, it should be pretty interesting uh, tomorrow, come 2 o'clock, and then his press conference. NQ holds their gap barely, and then they go trend up. They have a very two very small sets of single prints in L and in K. Okay? Russell... Forms a beautiful B-shape, gets a little distorted at the end, but still a nice B-shape for long liquidation. They go out 11 wide, and they hold their gap. We hold our gap in ES and SPY. Initially, it looked like we might be a B-shape. When I went up, and then we rolled back over. I thought if, if the Three Stooges, Kelly, Larry, and Moe, went down, I thought we had better odds once Jay rolled over from eyes high to actually go and possibly test the gap. Well, that was wrong. Now, I didn't get hurt by it. And I told the room, obviously things change once you get start getting above the opening, especially in K. But, um, you know, the, the MGI was, was in the bull's favor without a doubt. However, when they attempted to go trend down and B, when they lowered the volume pock, the TPO, I'm like, well, maybe we're just going to sit in this range and slowly take back the gap in a B-shaped formation. Well, that wasn't the case, obviously, late in the day. I had a good day, though. Uh, I had um, four lots of mini long in A period, which I did well on. I had three lots of mini long in B period, which I broke even totally on. B period was tough with the reversal bar, but I didn't lose money. I broke even. Uh, I made money on a, a long in C period to fill those single prints. But then, believe it or not, the rest of my trades are short. I took a short and see then after that to, because I didn't think we'd stop the one-time frame and get above the open. That worked out as it pulled back. Uh, I took a short in G period, looking for it to get back down to value low, which it did at the time. I actually shorted I, thinking it might be an afternoon rally high. It pulled back. It did, uh, you know, got the pock. And then K, I took another one lot. I made two points on it, but I was getting a little more uncomfortable. I said, I'm not doing that anymore. Now, did I miss a long play? Sure. But again, I, if, if I wasn't expecting them to really rip like this, to me, I didn't miss anything. So no big deal. So I didn't do anything in L&M. &M. And it was a good day. Again, today's the type of day that you make some money and, you know, you wait for the big days like we had Last week, we had five or six of them. At one point, we were looking to have our smallest range of the year and possibly one of our smallest volumes. Well, with those moves in L&M, both of those went off the table. Still not a big range by any stretch, but uh, not in the top 10 for smallest. We're holding a gap, only the fifth gap of the year that we're holding out of, I don't know, 20, uh, 20, 29 gaps. Utterly unbelievable. Um... As far as destinations go, for SPY, today's ups upside is today's high of 399.41, and then 4148 daily high, and then 40202 afternoon rally high from March 7th. For the downside, we're using L's high as the price probe, 398.49, nine wide at 396.67, and today's low of 395.88. And then fill in the gap at 394.17. That's a 141 point gap. ES, we have today's high of 43 and a quarter. Then they still had single prints from March 7th. They got into them late but didn't fill them. 43.50 to 48. And then 
uh, 54 as a high and 82.50 as a high. For the downside in ES, we have today's price probe of 33.75 L's high, 18.75 nine wide, 87.50 was 15 wide overnight from last night. I carry forward, and then today's low of 0350 and fill in the gap at 89.50. And then on our charts. <clears throat> So I'll just show you the weekly and the daily. So two big things were accomplished today. The bulls put the weekly back into balance. Now there's still three days to go in this week. I'm going to use a three-week balance right now. Again, though, you're just coming into balance. If this thing really ripped above the sixth high, it would still be balanced. But for now, it's a nice three-week balance. Okay? The sixth high is the top of it. Last week's low is the below of it. We're also back above. Look at that. And the lower high trend line. But what you want to see as a bull is to stop the lower highs that we're seeing this year so far. So that's going to be important going forward. Same on the daily. The daily held the uh, 20. We got down to it a couple of times today. Okay? And then we went up almost, well, no, I shouldn't say almost, but within a dollar or so of the 50. Now, the daily came out of two inside days in a row on a gap to the upside. So that was a successful move. Now the volume again, not horrible by any stretch. It's 87 million. So we, end up, we might end up doing an average. So very positive day for the bulls. But again, look at this. So far, still have that progression of lower highs. It's going to be interesting tomorrow once the Fed is done if this market continues to go higher and stops this, maybe, by the end of the week? Or do we roll back over and come back into balance on the daily? Thanks for the likes and subscribing. Hope you had a good day trading today. Rest up, and we'll speak prior to the opening tomorrow.